Bruch Maboyim. Thank you very much for attending. Welcome to our home. The uh, Again, as I mentioned before at the end of the lecture, if there, you know, anyone on Zoom wants a question, please unmute yourself and ask. If not, we'll continue with the second part. Um, the uh, Anyone who's not on Zoom that wants to be, again, on the left-hand side, <laughs> at least my left-hand side, probably your right, uh, is the uh, hookup for Zoom. Uh, this week, the, t the uh, topic for my thoughts is evil from birth. So this statement, <clears throat> excuse me, evil from birth, is taken as a quote from the Torah in Genesis, in the book of Beratius. Uh, it was said by God after the flood, after Noah had built an altar and brought sacrifices to God. The verse states that God smelled the appeasing fragrance, and God said to himself, never again, Will I curse the soil because of man? For the inclination of man's heart is evil from his youth. It also states in Genesis that sin is crouching at the door. What does that mean exactly, that sin is crouching at the door? We are told by our sages that while a baby is in its mother's womb, that there is an angel that teaches it all the Torah. On the first Friday night after the child's birth, before his circumcision, there is a custom to have what's called a Shalom Zohar, to greet the male child. It's sort of a party of sorts where we welcome a newborn child into this world. Now the event has both a positive and negative connotation. On the one hand, after all, we're celebrating the fact the child has entered into a Shabbos and that it will shortly be entering into the covenant of Abram Avinu of Abraham our father. Again, circumcision, bris mila. On the negative side though, we lament with him that he has lost all of the Torah that the angel had taught him while he was in his mother's womb. We have a belief that just before a baby is born, that an angel places its finger on the upper lip of the child, which causes it to forget all that it has learned in its mother's womb. The question arises, really, how is it possible that the angel that taught the child all the Torah would then be instrumental in taking away, taking it all away. Our sages tell us that, the, that an angel can only perform one task at a time. As we see in the portion of Ayera where Abraham, Abraham is visited by the three angels on the third day after his circumcision. Each one of the angels that visit him come to fulfill their own specific mission. So the question becomes, how is it possible for the same angel to give and then take away all the child's Torah knowledge that it learned in its mother's womb. I believe that the angel that makes the child forget all that he has learned while in his mother's womb is not the same angel that taught it all the Torah initially. As the verse stated in Genesis again, that sin is crouching at the door. And I believe that the reference to this sin that is crouching is really the Satan, what we refer to as the devil. It is he who takes away all the Torah that the newborn child was taught in his mother's womb. No other angel would volunteer to perform such a negative mission. You know, very few things in life are absolutes. There generally exists both a negative and a positive opportunity, possibility. Both of these possibilities exist with the loss of the Torah knowledge that the child has acquired. The negative side is easily recognizable. After all, the child has lost all the Torah that had been taught while in the womb. So what positive could there possibly be then? And the answer that the commentaries tell us is that now the child can earn his Torah knowledge rather than receiving it as a gift. You know, we appreciate those things that we work for much more than those things that we are given. When someone inherits his money, well, they spend it. If they earn money, they put it in the bank. The Talmud tells us that a person would rather have one bushel of his own wheat than nine bushels of someone else's. We are also told by the sages that a baby is born with what we call a yetzahara, an evil inclination, a wild and woolly, fun-loving friend whose mission in life is to tempt us with all types of distractions. It is his mission to convince us to be self-centered, to choose a life filled with fun and entertainment, rather than a life filled with altruism 
and substance. A life connected to following the will of our Creator by learning Torah and following His commandments. When the Torah tells us that sin is crouching at the door, well, I believe that the wording is spot on. Before Adam, first man, ate from the tree of knowledge. Evil, if you will, existed in the world, but it was in the form of a nachash, the snake. Once Adam ate from the tree of knowledge, he then internalized evil. Now, instead of evil being an external force, the snake, something that we could recognize and then try to avoid, he allowed it to become an internal force connected to our subconscious, something that knows us even better than we know ourselves. It tries to dominate all of our thoughts and actions and sadly, is very successful. It is not until the age of 13 when a young boy becomes a man, then he is then introduced to what we call his Yetzatov, his good inclination. Now, truth be told, this new friend, well, he's a bit nerdy and a bit boring. He only wants to learn. He only wants to follow a path of goodness and self-sacrifice. You know, he wants to connect to the path of his father in heaven and make him proud. He desires a life of substance. He's not interested in the frivolities of life. He's neat, clean, focused, all, all admirable traits. But you have to admit, the Yetzirah is a lot more fun to be with. So God, so to speak, stacks the deck against us. Think of it, if he really wants us to be good, then he should have first given us a Yetzirah, a good inclination, when we are born. Then, after 13 years of following the proper path of Torah and Mitzvot, we would develop enough spiritual muscle to deal with the negative influence of the Yetzirah, of our evil inclination. So why would God, our benevolent Father, give us a Yetzirah first? I think there are two answers to this question. First and foremost, God is our Father, and He wants a relationship with us. Since He created us evil from birth, in truth, the only way we can even have a chance of succeeding in our mission in life is only with his godly experience, assistance. Without that, we are doomed to failure. So he created us, he, pardon me, he created a scenario whereby we need him to be part of our daily lives. What we refer to is siata deshmaya, the help of heaven. Secondly, as a benevolent father, I thought that he gave us a defensible position, one that we could use at the end of time on our day of judgment. When we would ask, be asked by the heavenly court, why did you sin? We could answer, hey, it wasn't our fault. It was our evil inclination. We could say, the devil made me do it. After all, by the time that we received our good inclination, it was already too late. Sinning had already become habitual, a way of life for us. So the court would have to pardon our transgressions due to the extenuating circumstances beyond our control and allow us entry into heaven. I like the answer, but I'm afraid that it may not be correct. Yes, the Torah is very clear. The man has created evil from birth, uh, but that may not be God's choice. We have a belief in Kabbalah, according to uh, with, it, with something that we call Gilgulim, previous lives lived. Based on that belief, Basically, we are all old souls. We have all lived previous lives at different times throughout our journeys in this world. We even see this fact expressed with Moshe, Moses, the greatest of our prophets. The name Moshe is an acronym for the three lives that he lived. The Mem stands for Moshe. The Shin for Shes, Seth, the third son of Adam, first man. And the He for Hevel, Abel. Adam's second son. So one way to look at this concept of what we call Gilgulim is to compare it to someone who has graduated college with a degree in accounting. In order for them to become what we, basically a CPA, a certified public accountant, so they have to pass five tests. Now, almost everyone who has received their degree in accounting will pass at least three parts. There are those who may even pass four parts. It is highly unusual for anyone to pass all five on their first attempt. What people do 
is they go to work for an accounting firm and they retake the test until they have passed all five and then they become a CPA, Certified Public Accountant. Now our journey in this world can be compared to this example of the person earning their CPA. With each Gilgal, with each life that we live in this world, we fulfill some of our obligations, hopefully. With the combination of all three, we will have successfully completed our mission. <laughs> Easier said than done. Our evil inclination never gives up. He tries to use every ploy at his disposal to distract and convince us to follow him rather than the path that our good inclination wants us to follow. Basically, the true struggle in life. So when the Torah says we were created evil from birth, this may be factual. This world can be compared to a correctional institution, a prison. We are all here in this world to serve out our sentence. This world is what we refer to as a tikkun, a sort of correction for those things or thing that we need to correct. So what are we here for? Well, Think of what mitzvah you don't want to do. Well, that is most likely your mission in this world. You know, I always give the example of a health club. When it comes to exercise, most people work out muscles that make them look strong and attractive. And they work out their biceps and triceps, pecs, six pack, all muscles that you can show off to someone else. But many times people miss the most important muscles, those of the back, and core. Regardless of how strong you may look, if your back and core are weak, well, you're in big trouble. <clears throat> you may become infirmed well before your time. They tell a story about the Hassam Sofer. There was a widow who had, question, had a question about a chicken before the Shabbat. So she went to the Hassam Sofer and asked him whether the chicken was kosher or not. He told her that there was a nine-year-old boy who lived in the town who had not spoken a word since his birth. He told the widow to show the chicken to the young boy and ask him whether the chicken was kosher or not. So without hesitation, she went to the boy and asked him. She said, kosher or tray? He answered, kosher. And then he died on the spot. Well, <laughs> You can imagine that this incident caused quite a big bit of stir in the town. How was it that this boy, who never spoke a word before, was suddenly able to speak? And then why did he die? So they went to the Hassam Sofer for an explanation. He told them that the boy was really a righteous individual who had lived in a previous life. It seemed that when he stood before the heavenly court after his time on earth, they said to him that he had lived a pristine life and deserved to receive his reward in the highest realms of heaven. However, there was one, one blemish that would prevent him from reaching the heights that he truly deserved. It seemed that one Friday afternoon, shortly before the Shabbat, a widow had come to him with a chicken and asked him whether it was kosher or not. He was in a hurry, and he didn't take the time to examine the chicken properly. So he told the widow that the chicken was treif, not kosher, even though it really was kosher. She spent that Shabbat without any meat, and it was a source of distress for her for the whole Shabbat. The court told this righteous individual that he should go back to earth and correct the error that he had made. Well, he refused. He said that if he went back, he may lose more than he may gain. So he wasn't going back. As the saying goes, a bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. However, they assured him that he would lose nothing, no chance of losing it, since they would put his soul into the body of a boy who was mute and would therefore be exempt from keeping all the mitzvot. So the Hassam Sofer said that this boy carried the soul of this righteous individual and his whole purpose in being born was to correct this one misdeed. Once that was done, he was then able to return to heaven to receive his just reward. So the saying evil from birth now makes perfect sense, since almost all of us are old souls. We have been born again in this world 
to fulfill our mission. The question that we have to, have to ask ourselves is, what is that mission? If we are honest with ourselves, then we should all have some idea as to what our mission really is and what we need to work on to improve. By working on ourselves, we also have the ability and responsibility to improve the world at large. And with that, may we help to bring about the final redemption with the coming of Mashiach Sakenu quickly and in our time. Okay, if there's anybody on Zoom that would like to ask a question, please do so now. If not, we will end this portion of the recording and move on to the second part. So I will assume that is the case. So let me thank you again for listening. And um, again, may God bless you and yours with good. And uh, again, if you want to see the lecture on Zoom, the hookup is on the screen. And uh, again, stay happy, stay healthy, stay safe. And uh, may God bless you with all this good. Shabbat Shalom. Again, thank you for tuning in.